Hey guys, welcome back to the Extra Couch Marine. I haven't done a video in a while, and I pulled an engine out of the boat the other day, and I thought, hey, here's an opportunity to show you an engine that's dead, and show you uh, something useful about drive plates, which I'll get to in a second, just to give you an idea what this is. This is a Ford 1.8 diesel. One of these old lumps. Um, very, very good in what they used to be in automotive industry, I'm told. Um, not a big fan on boats. I don't think these engines belong in boats at all. Um, when they're good, they're good. When they're not, they're not. And they're difficult to work with, I find. Um, they just suffered with so many different variations of problems and trying to get to anything on these, like trying to get into something and work on it, you've got to take half the engine apart to get to a nut and it's just ridiculous, you know. Um, typical automotive industry for you. Uh, they've got timing belts on the front as well, quite a critical thing. If that fails, then you've got, you know, one headache after another. You know, coming around to this side, you've got all the manifolds. You've got two large manifolds, one for the induction, one for the exhaust. And it just, it's just complicated. Um, and, it, you know, you've got your rocker box on top, trying to do your tight -ups, valve clearances on there. I believe these are shimmed. So not even just like an adjustment nut. It's, it's, it's shimming packs. You've got to crank them over, check the clearances, put the shims in appropriately. It's complicated stuff. It's not not the everyday type of thing. A good automotive, sorry, try that again. A good automotive mechanic will, will be happy with these. Um, it's not like I can't do it, but just they're just complicated bits of kit. But they were successful, I believe, in like so. I think, if I'm not correct, incorrect, this would have been in something like a, a Ford Escort van or something like that. Um, and if you open the bonnet, what you would end up seeing is this this sort of view. And the radiator will be down by my sort of chicken legs, as you can see. Chicken legs, <laughs> Anyway, moving on from that, move this bit around. I can't get there. Or you might be looking at it from that view. These manifolds wouldn't be there, these are marine manifolds. So there's your oil filler cap for putting oil in the engine once it's an oil change. And uh, that all saints probably wouldn't have been there. It would have been one down the bottom somewhere just to keep the starter battery charged up. And this is marine hose. But other than that, it's pretty much standard engine. This um, bell housing, I don't know if that's original for the engine. This looks marine to me. Um, don't quote me, I don't know. Uh, it does look like it's a marine one. But the reason for this video is drive plates and why they're important, where they are, how to um, assess them, check them, and a few pitfalls and a few pros. So what we see here is the rear of the engine. So this is your bell housing. In behind this plate is a flywheel. In case you don't know what a flywheel is, a flywheel is a, in old fashioned terms is a solid mass of, of weight. Um, and the reason that's useful is it helps create a smooth balance of power. Okay, so it would go in this direction because from the front of the engine it's always clockwise that way around. So for the back of the engine is always anti clockwise. So as the engine's firing a piston, the crank is spinning, this flywheel keeps the inertia of the engine and smooths that process down. Um, and flywheels in modern vehicles like my Transit Custom has got what's called a dual mass flywheel. We've got a solid mass bolted to the to the um, crank and then a secondary uh, flywheel inside which is a floating one. So when you're changing gear or declutching things like that, you, you're still getting mass and spin even though the engine is slowing down to try and allow that smoother, more reliable, smoother power transmission. The only downside to the um, uh, dual mass flywheels is they can be horrible when they go wrong if you are a bit too heavy on the foot and I've done it sometimes you can stall the van very very easily um, not big fan of dual mass I personally think a solid mass is better but hey you know preferences and all that but with this engine you've it's an old on so you have a solid mass this is your drive plate this outer diameter is bolted solidly to the flywheel you've got a various number of uh, bolts that keep it in place this center hub is floating so it is affixed to the back plate but at the back it's got a circlip so it can spin only so much the idea of this is that these absorb torsional forces and the reason it does that so if you are engaging um, a head or a stern on your gearbox a marine gearbox you must remember that in the internal combustion engines are always running we don't use stop start on boats as far as I'm aware there's probably an application for that but in the small craft that we all use you're not seeing that so we won't we won't touch on that for now so these are always always running when you need power so they're always spinning so you've got all that energy needs to do something if you just engaged your um, clutch in your gearbox or stuck it in a head or a stern you're trying to move non-stationary mass that's your prop shaft your propeller that's all heavy stuff it's going to jolt it 
aggressively. So the you know there's the, the rules of thermal dynamics and motion and all these different things come into play with stuff like this. But one of the ones you need to remember is any mass that's moving doesn't want to stop. It takes a great amount of energy to stop an object, or vice versa. Anything that's not moving takes a great amount of energy to move it. So you've got to combat that issue. So what you need to do is absorb forces whilst the gearbox, the, the prop shaft and the propeller are starting to receive power and catch up to the speed of the engine, the RPM. So what will happen then is you would engage your, your clutch on your gearbox. All you do is you move your lever forward or backwards. The gearbox does all the rest of it for you inside. And then this is spinning and this hub here will float you can see it's doing that I'm going back and forth it only go in one direction and this is a spring so basically this this plastic membrane is a spring mechanism some of these dry plates have springs like actual coil metal springs depending on the design and the reason for doing it but this is an R&D they use plastic on some of their R&D stuff very very good quality and they've also got a fail safe so if the spring broke it would still deliver power to your gearbox you could get back to shore or to a marina or to the towpath side or depending on where you are so it's got a fail safe but it will not deliver power smoothly and it will damage your transmission if you're using it excessively. So as, I sh as I'm saying, so you can see that spins there. So your gearbox input shaft fits inside this hole here. As you um, engage your head or stern, and that's at low RPM, so like idle speed. So that little click of power, the engine will be running at about 800 RPM typically. Some engines are a bit lower, some engines are a bit higher. It depends on the nature of the engine. That would then deliver a smooth amount of power into your gearbox. You, what you would get is a nice gentle click or the prop shaft would start to move and you wouldn't even notice that things are going on other than the fact that the boat's starting to move a little bit. And then you can increase power and then things go smoothly. If you have a dodgy drive plate, you'll go into a, uh, a head or a stern, depending or forward or backwards basically, and then you'll start getting a horrible rattle noise at low RPM and it'll be like clack, 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 because what's happening is the engine spinning at a set speed because being governed by the fuel system but the gearbox is speeding up and slowing down because it's not a driven object it's being driven and what's happening is the gearbox is trying to catch up uh, sort of trying to keep pace but it's slowing down due to the, the basic fact that it's got resistance with water and it's heavy and then you get rattling noise and the way to combat that would be to increase the power a little bit that would start to tighten up the torque basically and then keep that mass from, uh, from, from rattling. If you did that ahead or stern and you hear that rattle it usually means this is failing or failed and I just changed one recently on London water bus for that exact reason uh, we're getting a horrible rattle noise so that's that's been done and now it's much much smoother. Um, so a couple of tips to know about these how to look after them if you ever catch anything in your propeller like rope um, or a lump of wood or anything like that and the engine comes to a, to a dead stop you need to to check a few things and the first things you do are check that your oil level is okay the engine didn't overheat the gearbox is looks okay have a quick visual look around the engine whilst it's all turned off you must make sure you're safe first and then um, what you need to also do is check that this hasn't taken what a friend of mine would say in the trade a twist and what that means is basically all that mass is spinning really really fast and there's a lot of power being delivered to a propeller okay and suddenly that's stopped the engine's still going something somewhere has got to give give because you've got two things that are opposing each other spinning but one thing stopped the other thing so heat's going to be generated somewhere something might snap or sh shear usually these take a twist so what happens the flywheel keeps going this in, inner hub is stopped because the gearbox has been stopped and the plastic membrane will just get ripped and it will just get torn out so that twist will tear tear the membrane out but typically because these are fail safe it will still be able to drive the gearbox a way to check that is like I said a moment ago. You basically, once you know everything else is okay, your founding's been cleared for the propeller, the engine hasn't overheated, there's no oil leaking anywhere, there's no major damage to you or anything else on the craft, it's in a safe place, you're moored up. Just basically stick, run the engine, stick it into a head or a stern and listen. If you hear a horrible rattly noise from either the bell housing uh, in a head or a stern, you've probably got a problem here. You need to get someone in to check it if you don't know what you're doing. Um, yeah, so they're very, very important, these. And for anyone that's curious as well, being this is, this is an automotive engine, this is where a clutch would be. So typically within uh, anything these days on roads, a clutch for a manual gearbox would be here. So a dry plate, this isn't used. This is just for marine application. So a, a clutch looks very, very similar. However, the outer plate is a spring pack and you have a drive plate inside that with a friction material, 
on the on the actual plate and as you push down a special bearing comes in pushes down on those springs and it relaxes that and then that inner drive plate can be spun freely means the gearbox is not being driven so when you're putting your foot on the clutch and changing gear with your left hand if you're in the uk that means you can change gear smoothly using synchromesh i won't touch on synchromesh all you automotive engineers out there will know exactly what that means so you get a nice smooth transmission obviously with a marine application you don't need to use a clutch because that's done inside the gearbox however i have once seen a boat with a, a transit gearbox and that was entertaining to see um yeah going from um, a gear into reverse was entertaining there we are so one engine that's now done for going to replace that with something else um, but this has served its time unfortunately it's not uh, viable for saving now so it's going off to scrapyard i hope that was a little bit informative drive plates very very important bit of kit um, they're always sandwiched in between the um, engine and gearbox the gearbox uh, uh, registration plate or adaption plate would bolted to the front here gearbox would be there somewhere it could be uh, prm hydraulically cooled a uh, box with an oil cooler on the top or it could be just like a mechanical box like a tmp or another again another prm or hearth whatever and that could be down the bottom here so basically that's that i hope that was helpful and uh, be good to see you around again if you haven't already please consider subscribing um, I keep trying to come up with ideas to make new videos. It's actually, you can blame my eldest son for playing with the camera the other day. And today, he's got really into playing cameras. So I thought, hmm, I best get it out and make use of it. Other than that, summer is here. Um, and if you can hear, the birds are singing. It's a good day. Take care. See you later.